These are the tools you'll need to install the cabinets. Now watch and you'll see how a big job can turn into a small one with the right tools and a little bit of expertise. The first step is to check the walls for square and plumb, and also to make sure that your elevations are correct. You need to be sure how high the walls are so you know that your cabinets will fit correctly. To check the walls for square, you need to measure them in two places. If the walls are square, you won't need to make any adjustments for level. As in this case, the top of the base cabinet is marked at the same elevation from the floor. For this cabinet line, the top of the base cabinet is at 34 and a half inches. Now that you've made a top mark for the base cabinets, it's time to make a bottom mark for the top cabinets. For this cabinet line, the bottom mark for the top cabinets is at 56 and 3 quarters inches. And remember, the top mark for the bottom cabinet is at 34 and a half inches. After making your elevation marks, you need to connect them by drawing one continuous line that shows, in this case, the top of the base cabinet. It's important that you make sure that your line is level. After you've marked the top of the base cabinet, now you need to scribe a line marking the bottom of the top cabinets. And once again, make sure your line is level. That way everything looks right once it's installed. Now that you've located the tops and the bottoms of the cabinets, now it's time to find the studs. You need to find the studs because these cabinets must be mounted into a structural member of the house. After placing a few of the cabinets, you need to connect them together. You do this by using a clamp. The clamps hold these two cabinets together. That way, when you align them, they'll stay put. After aligning the cabinets and making sure they're fitting together nicely, it's time to drill a pilot hole. This pilot hole goes through one cabinet and all the way into the other. Once you've drilled the pilot hole, it's time to put a countersink. The countersink recesses the hole a little bit, that way the screw that holds these two cabinets together won't be sticking out. After placing a pilot hole and putting in a countersink, now the screw goes in nice and easy. The exact same process needs to be completed for the bottom of the cabinet as well. One screw in the top holding the face frames together is not enough. So now you'll need to drill another pilot hole. And then put a countersink in.
After the cabinet sections are firmly secured together, it's time to level the cabinets. Remember that level line that we scribed at 34 and a half inches? That's the top of the base cabinet. You use these wedges to make sure that the cabinet sits nice and level. Even though you've already scribed a line, check the level on the top of the cabinet just to be sure. The wedges are also used to make sure that you can maintain the proper distance between the front of the cabinet and the back of the cabinet. When you're sure the cabinet parts are level and that the spacing is correct, it's time to secure this cabinet section to the wall. Do this by driving one of the longer set screws through the cabinet itself and into the wall stud. For each cabinet section, secure it to a wall stud both at the top of the cabinet and the bottom. But before you move on, make sure that everything went as planned. Check the cabinet for plumb. In order to make the right setbacks and get a good fit so the cabinets fit the room well, you may need to install a filler strip or a spacer. A filler strip or a spacer installs exactly the same way, just as if it was another cabinet. One thing you'll notice about cabinet installation is learn how to do it right the first time, and then just repeat as necessary. On some of the cabinet pieces, it may be necessary to use more than two clamps. Use as many as you need. With this filler strip, it's a little bit small, so it might move around a little bit more when the installation process proceeds. So, clamp it down and make sure it's nice and secure. Now that we've learned how to do those steps, it's time to watch the whole installation process of the base cabinets.
Now that the base cabinet section installation is complete, it's time to start installing the upper cabinets or the wall cabinets. Do this by bringing spacers which keep it elevated to exactly the right height. Just like with the base cabinets, even though you've set it to a line, you need to make sure that it is level and plumb. Remember when you marked the wall studs? You need to find that location so you know that when you attach the wall cabinets that they're also secure into a framing member of the house. And just like the base cabinets, you need to put a long screw through the wall cabinet into the wall stud. You need to do this in several locations. It's recommended that you do this in every wall stud that the cabinet comes into contact. Remember, at each location there needs to be two screws in each wall stud, one in the bottom of the cabinet and one in the top of the cabinet. And as I said before, learn how to install the cabinets correctly the first time and repeat as necessary. You can see that the same procedures apply to the upper cabinets or the wall cabinets as did the base cabinets. Now after you've secured the bottoms of the wall cabinets together, it's time to secure the tops. Remember that whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Now once these two cabinets are firmly secured together, it's time to fasten the second cabinet to the wall. By using one of the long set screws, going all the way through the cabinet into the wall stud. One screw in the bottom and one screw in the top. Now that that sequence is complete, it's time to watch the whole installation process of the upper cabinets.